Hey guys, this is Hell Hades. This is a Raid Shadow Legends video. Guys, we've got a summoning event this weekend. I am absolutely torn on this one. So um, we've got our normal two times chance to get legendary champions from Sacred Shards. Free to play here, I've got one. I think my main, I've got a couple. Um, so the boosted summons will go from a 6% chance to get a legendary to 12. And then obviously the epic drops down with that. Now, I've got to say, like, you always feel like you're guaranteed a legendary. Yeah, it's got it's doubled. You're guaranteed a legendary. You're pulling a sacred shard for God's sake. It has to be legendary. I've I've gone ten on my main account without pulling a legendary before, and I've also gone three back to back pulling legendaries. It's it's very brutal. It's either like all or nothing. Um, but in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk you through my top three legendaries you can get per faction. Um, but I'm also going to talk you through what's happening for the Saturday and the Sunday. So Friday is just a straight up two times chance to get legendaries. Saturday and Sunday are actually adding in a 10 times chance alongside it to get Calvalax. Now Calvalax, I did a guide on him uh, when he first came out. Really, really fun champion. Like super sweet champion. I really like this champ. So this would be an awesome one to get. So I would advise, if you don't have him, and you are going to pull shards, and let's not forget, Halloween Fusion is like two weeks away at max. You will have to have shards to be able to pull uh, or to be able to get that champion. Okay, so if you're not a spender and you know, you're a bit like my free-to-play here, honestly, we might struggle anyway, but I'm not using any of my shards up on the free-to-play at the moment. I'm hitting Clan Boss every day, and I'm hoping that I see shards pop out of Clan Boss every day yeah that's what we're going for bam no shards so keep up no shards so it's like that sucks um but every day we're trying it and um you've got to kind of be building it now so on my free to play i really want to pull in the two times but i also know that if i want any chance of getting this fusion i've just got to save so unfortunately i'm on save mode on the free to play but i probably will pull shards on the main um but yeah, Calvalax, why is he so good then? We've got 40% um, chance of increasing all poison debuffs on his A1. That's a really solid A1. A uh, bit of a heal going on as well, which is quite meaty when it gets going. He's got an A2, places an extra hit for each poison debuff up to three hits. This is an absolute nuke against bosses. And then his A3 um, is actually a nuke against anything. This is sweet. Uh, when I first built him out, I was like, just pump poisons out and build it with high crit rate and stuff. You absolutely do need to drop defense, weaken enemies, put the poisons out there, and then get him slamming. And it is disgusting. It's an absolute sweet nuke. Um, so this is a max HP. There's not many max HP champions in the game. There's only a couple of AoE ones. This guy is probably the best. I, I love him. Such a fun champ. Damage increases according to the number of poison debuffs on each target. And then he's got this passive that just throws out poisons at the start of each round. Very cool. So places four poisons on each enemy at the start of the round. Uh, and then 50% chance to place a poison at the start of each turn. So straight away, start of a round, it's out there. And then every turn he has a chance to put more out there. It's kind of cool. Um, yeah, he's really strong. Really, really strong. Whenever an enemy places a poison on himself, on this guy... Instantly removes, replaces it with a heal. Very cool. Really good for a whole bunch of content, honestly. So he's a really cool one to have in there. Speed in all battles as well is brilliant. Um, this dude is the real deal for the Saturday and Sunday, albeit a times 10 during a times 2. So times 2, yep, you've got more chances to pull legendaries. But you think about how many legendaries are in the game now, a times 10 event still means it's incredibly difficult to find him. So it's the, probably the... Well, it is the best chance you'll ever have to pull him specifically, but it doesn't mean you're definitely going to get him. There's tons of legendaries in the game. So let's go through then. Let's give you my top three for faction and why. I'm not going to include Void Champions because this is not, you know, Sacred Shards. It's not a Void event. These are the ones I would like to see if I pulled them out. So number one, actually, for Banner Lords is going to be Sathalia. Believe it or not. Who would have thought that? I wouldn't a year ago. Um crazy crazy base stats yeah she is an arena goddess she's got a turn meter um sorry she's got a, a remove buffs and 
decrease enemy turn meter whilst filling your turn meter on our A3. This skill is insanely good. She's got the big one of the biggest heals in the game on our A2. And then she's got a nice HP burn on her A1. Crazy stats. Sathalia, kind of can play her anywhere, but she's an arena goddess. Um, I've still got to call out my man Septimus. Uh, still in my Dragon 25 team right now on my main. Um, I mean, when I got him on my main, before they introduced stages 21 to 25, honestly, the most fun I'd had in the game ever. He just hits like a cannon on his A2 with this enemy max HP skill. It hits even harder if people are uh, full health. He, uh, sorry, yeah, if people are full health or over 50% health. It's just so much fun. You build him full crit damage, high speed, 100% crit rate, and he just goes and blows stuff up. But he's also usable elsewhere. He's got a chance to increase um, with his passive. Sorry, he's got a chance to increase duration of all debuffs on a target. So it could come in for clan boss. Just generally super fun and really versatile champion to kind of play anywhere. Now, the third one I'm going to call out here, I can't believe I'm calling out Lord Champfoot. I mean, it's just a boring champion, okay? But he's boring, but versatile, and he, he becomes kind of like this Mr. Solo type of fella. Uh, decreased attack on an ability, decreased defense on an ability, and then he's got this shield debuff that pops up. One turn cooldown, uh, shield buff that he puts on himself, and honestly, it just makes him capable of soloing stuff that you shouldn't be able to do. So, you know, in terms of versatile, helping you with stuff like Doom Tower, um, he comes in and just does a lot of work. Now, what I will say is that kind of screams, you could have probably put Rished off the Bold in the same group, to be honest. It screams that this faction is just a bit weak if Lord Champfort or Rished off the Bold were in my brain for top three. High Elves then, top three. Again, we're not doing Void Champions here. Um, I think the first one I'm going to call out is Lissandra. So Lissandra, best speed manipulator in the game in total, as in boosting yours whilst decreasing others. Um, fantastic speed aura, 100% deeply uh, turn meter, great base stats, uh, speed you up whilst pushing back enemies turn meter, just all sorts of speed freakiness going on. Lissandra will play anywhere in the game, but she is top tier in the arena, top tier against Scarab boss, top tier honestly against a lot of bosses where you can manipulate turn meter without getting penalized for it. So Lissandra, super sweet. Um, Second one I'm going to call out is actually Shiromani. So Shiromani, I feel like she's totally underrated. Like, 100% chance to freeze an enemy with a A3 if you book it out. This also hits really hard, by the way. It's an AoE. It hits really hard. So at the same time as, as freezing, you're also smacking someone, um, which is just nice in a whole bunch of content like Spider, Bommel, uh, etc. Yeah, so this is just the arena, obviously. Cool base, uh, really good base stats. Very nice heal on her A2. And then she's got another chance to freeze on her A1. So underrated and super cool uh, champ. Again, because we're kind of like slim pickings for non-voids here. There's good void champions here. Um, I feel like I need to call out the buff that's happened to Roannus. So 100% chance to stun if you book him now. It's really good. Uh, it's also a decent hit. It's not a crazy hit, but a decent hit. Um, his A2 is a nuke now, single target nuke, which is good. The, the damage was uh, multiplied pretty well on this one. And an okay A1 with a block buffs. Okay base speeds. He's not strong. Like, I wouldn't be like, build him, he's the best champion in the world. But he is now decent in this faction. Okay, let's go into Sacred Orders then. Uh, Sacred Order, we've got fairly few legendaries to be honest. First one for me is Marta, still queen of the game in a certain sense she's not like number one like she used to be in all legendaries but crazy base defense and an hp kind of slow actually but she's one of the few champions in the game that have got the um full team counter attack she's got an aoe provoke and decrease attack and she's got an a1 decrease defense she hits really hard with this a3 um so yeah just a solid champion clan boss a lot of doom tower content she's coming back into the big teams to do some work um, and she will just kind of help carry you through anywhere in the game. Uh, next one I'm going to call out was actually one of the champions that was a fusion. Astralon, still think he's super good, really strong A3, big hit, 100% chance to stun. 
Um, he's got Ignore Defense, Strengthen, and Ally Protect on his A2 for a single target. Uh, he's also got a chance to revive from this, which is pretty cool if he kills someone. Uh, and then he's got a Decrease Defense A1. Uh, also pairs up with Countess Licks with the A1 if you've got her. Uh, and then this kind of fairly cool turn meter fill on his uh, passive as well. Good base speed, good nuka for arena, and generally strong to just kind of use as a control champion through a lot of content. Um, now it's quite hard because honestly you've got Cupidus, Decent, Abess, really strong, and Roshgard. I'm going to call out Roshgard because of his ability to help you with stuff like Bommel, his ability to feature in unkillable teams for clan boss, just generally this block damage ability. It's very rare to get into a game especially for two turns the only champion with block damage for two turns early game arena he is an absolute menace to face if this goes off because your team have got so much time to get their job done late game people can deal with him really easily but certainly for pve content block damage is a like a massive massive skill so rush guard comes in as number three let's look at the barbs end so barbarians um i mean Number one's got to be Valk for this faction. She's so versatile. Is she your arena champion that's going to push the enemy's turn meter back with her passive? Is she your massive shield for clan boss? Just generally, she's a big shield anyway for any content and a full team counterattack. Um, and she's got decreased turn meter on her A1 as well. So much going on with this champ. Very fast, great base stats. Uh, Valk's still one of the best champions in the whole game. Um, Number two for me that I'm going to call out is going to be Seal of the Drakes. You get her as a freebie anyway, but she's damn fine. Um, AoE stun. Don't underestimate how cool this is. I actually build mine now to stun, so I put a Masteries to enhance the chance of stunning. In terms of Doom Tower waves, she's going out there doing an AoE stun, double hit. Hits pretty hard as well. Um, but things like a passive, I think, are what set her aside from other champions that can do control similar to what she can do a passive giving you that guaranteed heal every time she takes a turn if she's in relentless gear she double heals because she's doing it twice throwing out increased speed on your team as well and then if someone drops she's like ah hold on a minute i've got an answer let's pick them up so yeah ally protect on the person she picks up really good if you're trying to protect someone that keeps going down in spider picks them up protects them and then she's taking half that damage um and then she's also got a turn meter drop and a decreased speed on her A1. It, like, the whole kit is out of this world amazing for everywhere apart from clan boss. So Silver Drake's in the top three. And then the other one I'm going to call out here is Elder Skarg. Underrated, this champion. Underrated. So good. One of the hardest hitting, if not the hardest hitting, single target attacks in the game on his A2. So if it procs for six hits, which it can do if you've got more debuffs out there, flip an egg. This thing hits like an absolute cannon. Even in somewhere like Clan Boss, this hits for a lot. Um, he's got this AoE ability on his A3, um, buffs himself, puts out a fear everywhere, and then if fear's out there, he's going to place an AoE HP burn on all of the targets. So you've got an AoE HP burn everywhere. It's huge. It's one of the best abilities in the late game. For spider for doom tower stuff it's really strong uh, and then he's just got a single target hit um as well but yeah generally strong strong champion passive is is a bit situational getting hit by legendaries you take less damage but think about somewhere like doom tower or faction wars often the enemy waves are legendary so it's not just an arena uh, strat this one but yeah pretty cool pretty cool um so that's top three for barbs let's go into the ogryn tribes then so um Ogryn Tribes, I'd say, is one of the weaker factions. Uh, it's certainly for calling out like a top three. Now, this is going to blow people's minds, okay? Uh, number one, Ignatius, I don't think this will. The main reason why I'm calling out him for number one, he's a hard-hitting defense-based champion. Makes him capable of doing stuff like uh, being your solo farmer for Nightmare Campaign, let alone normal campaign. Um, if you put him in something like Lifesteal Gear. You can also use him for this A3. Um, an irresistible HP burn. So he can throw out an HP burn, and no matter how high Sorath's resistance gets, he still makes it land. It's quite a long cooldown on this, just be aware of that. But you know, for something like Spider, it's good as well. Uh, and then he's also got an AoE nuke on his A2 with a chance to provoke, and a bit of a stun on his A1. He's kind of slow. Other than that, he's super cool. Ignatius is my number one. Now, 
My number two is War Mother. Seriously? She has changed. So she was already a hard-hitting champion. No one really appreciated it, but she was already a hard-hitting champion. Just in your mind, just think to yourself, she doesn't have bombs. There's no bombs in her kit, okay? Forget bombs. She has got an absolute nuke on her A3, and she hits really hard on her A2 as well. If there's bombs out there, she does more damage, but bombs are only really for PvP. And she's also got, she's one of the very few champions in the game to have a really, really strong chance of landing her decrease attack on her A1. So double hitter, each hit places, in fact, it's, it's 100%, each hit places decrease attack. I don't know why, why it's, it does that, to be honest, but everyone else in the game, except maybe two, like Maneater's one of them, there's one other, I think, there's a percentage chance to place decrease attack with her an A1. For War Mother, 100% as long as she's got enough accuracy and it's not a weak hit. But then she's got two chances, even with a weak hit. Um, so yeah, she's got one of the best chances to lay decrease attack in the game on a single target and two nukes. So War Mother, better than you think. Uh, and then the last one I'm going to call out is Bigan. Looks a lot like Ignatius. Um, he's fast, he hits hard. He's got control pretty much everywhere. AoE stun, uh, AoE drop turn meter and speed, and then just an AoE smack. So hits hard. He's kind of like your upgraded Bellower, really. Um, big one. Top three. Okay, then let's get on to the Lizards. Lizards is probably an easier one to call out. Um, I mean, you've got a whole bunch of like top tier legendaries here. Draco's my number one. Very versatile champion. Can play almost anywhere. Uh, smack on his A1. Multi-poison on his A2. And AoE drop defense and weaker, which is a place. Yeah, so he's placing it, which means he's not hitting means he can't um, have any weak hits to land this. So he can actually go into negative affinity uh, teams against negative affinity teams. He'll still place this ability as long as there's not block buffs out there and as long as he's got enough accuracy to do it. So yeah, makes him really versatile, easily top of this faction. Number two, I'm going to call out. I'm going to leave Basatha. He is actually super solid, but almost impossible to get. So I'm going to leave him out. Fushan is my number two. People underrate Fushan. Smacks with his A3. Smacks with his A2. He's got a speed in all battles aura, which actually makes him really viable for a lot of clan boss comps. I'll show you one uh, probably tomorrow, actually, that, that uh, Saf's pulled together. 106 speed is fast. He hits hard. AoE, random hitters. Shame this is not just a straight AoE because it would make him even better, but um, can place decreased defense as like a secondary drop defense champ for you. And then he's got this A1, which hits hard. And he's got a chance of an extra hit. But if he hits with an extra hit, there's a chance with that to have an extra hit. And if he hits with that, there's a chance for that to have an extra hit. I've seen him hit four or five times in a row and smack people into the ground. Smack the clan boss into, um, into heaven and back. Uh, yeah, this, this dude pulls together the new kid. It's really fun. And then my number three for this faction, I think I'm going to... Look, it should be Roxam. Everything about his kit says it should be Roxam. Um, but I think I'm going to give it to, uh, to Raz. Raz in, fusible champion, really versatile, really great for clan boss defense and weaken on a three turn cooldown. It's perfect. Um, triple hit A1 that can steal that buff. Clan boss throws out there, really nice. And then for other content, a hard hitting AoE turn meter drop. Yeah, so for the arena, you can actually build a nuke. Raz, people don't expect it, and he just blows up the whole enemy team. People are not expecting it to come. His weakness is his speed, really. He's hard hitting, all of that stuff, but he's pretty damn slow. So Raz is stealing it for me today. All right, Skinwalkers then. So Skinwalkers, I'd say kind of weak for legendary champions. Um, my favorite one, my top of the list is going to be Longbeard. He's probably the best champion that could build into a blender style comp in the arena where you're you're throwing in two other champions with AoE A1s that do just a full nuke. Uh, he sets it up with his A3. But because he makes those champions hit for 20% more damage, straight up, whatever they were going to hit four times it by 1.2, that's what they're now doing. Makes him really effective in that scenario. He also brings a weaken. He also brings uh, ignore shield and block damage, which is actually kind of cool for faction wars. I think one of the ways you end up against 
um, Rosh Guard and he just whacks through it. Hits hard, fun champion, um, and the ally attack is a really cool ability kind of anywhere in the game. So Longbeard number one. Um, number two for this, for this faction, you're not going to like it because everyone likes to moan about Cleopteryx, but I think it's her. So there's not many champions in the game at the minute that can throw out Hex, and Hex is actually really strong when it's out there. Um, she can do it. She also hits pretty damn hard with all her abilities. Yeah, this AoE here hits hard. It's got block active skills. It's a really strong ability if Hex is out there. Um, she's got a passive as well, counterattack with default steal A1 whenever this champion loses 30% HP in a turn. That's a lot. Always counterattacks when attacked if two or more allies are dead. That's it's pretty cool. Um, and then she's got a chance to throw weaken out on this as well. So she's a great champion. People just love to hate her because they lost their sacred shards, which I get. But she's actually a really good champ. Um, now, my number three for this is, is a bit of a, um, a coin toss, really. I think I'm going to go with Hakorn just for his versatility. Like, I don't particularly love him, but a good support champion is hard to find. Norod was close for this one for me because he's so unique. But um, this ability here is quite hard hitting, is A3. This is a really good cleanse ability. So, removes all debuffs from all allies. It's great in a whole bunch of Doom Tower content. Then he puts block debuffs out there and he heals as well. It's a really good cleanse. It's a shame it's not on a three turn cooldown, but because of this ability, it's why he's sneaking in. Uh, he's also got a chance to stun. Pretty decent chance to stun on his A1. So hack on coming in for me, top three. Um, okay then, on to Orcs. Oh, there's actually a lot more Orcs and there's some damn good ones as well. I think number one for me is going to be Iron Brago. So Iron Brago allows you to do stuff that you just couldn't do before, okay? He has got a passive ability. 10% of his defense gets allocated to all of your team's defense except himself. At the start of a, of a fight, even if he goes down, if he's in the dirt, doesn't matter. They keep that 10% defense. It's really strong. So if he's got 5,000 defense, everybody else has just straight up been given an extra 500 defense. Means that if you're building something like a clan boss team, um, well, actually, let me tell you the second part. He also keeps increased defense up if you book him forever. 100% of the time, okay? So you add these two things together. You've got a passive, which is giving you a chunk of defense. You've got increased defense up all the time, timed in your defense by 1.6. And you want to get yourself, for most content, certainly clan boss, that's where he's best, up to 4,200 defense, yeah? So when you've got the chunk of defense from this, and you've got the increased defense buff on all the time, you can actually run your clan boss team with about 2,300 defense, put Iron Brago alongside them, and all of a sudden their defense capped. It means that you can build them with a ton more damage than you should be able to, all because of this fella. Um, he's also got a three turn decrease attack. Now, this is an AoE nuke. Everything he does, by the way, is a smack. It hits really hard, but this is an AoE smack chance to provoke as well the decrease attack now this is his weakness versus some other champions in the game his decrease attack is 100 percent chance to land yeah um however there's a three percent chance in the game that it just won't land yeah it's just no matter what your accuracy is there's a three percent chance it just won't happen if that happens in clan boss you're probably dead at the later stages which is a nightmare kind of means you need someone else in the team that is a, a fullback or you need to be running on a two for one cycle so that he gets it, gets two chances to land it um, within the, the cycle of clan boss. If you get him on a two for one, I don't think there's a better champion in the game for decrease attack because of everything else he brings and the damage that he does. So yeah, Brago, awesome, awesome champion. Now, number two for me with his recent buff, Robar, hardest hitting champion in the game on an AoE. Providing there is one of these debuffs out there before. The trouble with him is, his affinity means that he goes up often against, you know, spirit affinity defense-based champions, and he can weak hit. But they sped him up, he hits like an absolute freight train. Also, for any other content outside the arena, uh, if you book him, 100% chance to place decreased defense, yeah? Which is a huge skill as well. So, as long as you're running him alongside someone with control, um he becomes one of the best double AoE champions in the game. 
His A2 hits hard. His A3 hits like an absolute cannon, providing there's this uh, one of these abilities out there first. So Robar for me, absolute like he is spiking up the old um, the, the tables. Now, Creela is the other one that I call out here. I love, love, love Creela. She hits really hard with this A A2, really hard with this A3. She also puts massive buffs on your team. She also has got an ally attack. She's also got a decent A1, hits hard with it as well. Fantastic base stats across the board. Great in clan boss, great for any kind of content. Proper end game legendary champion. So that's my top three. But honestly, since his buff Grohax now better, since his buff King Garog is now better, um, Teela's still crap. <laughs> so let's move on then. Uh, Demon Spawn. Demon Spawn top three. Damn, Demon Spawn is like... Oh, you could pull out six easily. Like, easily, easily, easily. How do you pull a top three here? It could be Duchess, Kaimar, uh, Countess Lix, Drex, Candy, Sakia. Easily. Any of those, easily. And Tyrant is good. Um, damn. This is hard. This is really hard. So, I think number one for me, for his versatility, is just Kaimar. I actually still think he's probably the best non-void legendary in the game. Mate, or at least top three so he's fast he's got an aoe cleanse he's got um a, a reset cooldown of all skills which is super cool he's got a uh, poison a1 aoe again and he's got speed in arena um same as arbiter yeah same speed aura as arbiter he's very very versatile one of the best if like if not the best arena champion in the game right now for the current meta Mainly because he can do both the sleep and just be like, sleep. Um, let people run through their reaction gear and then your team come in and nuke over the top. After he's done that, he's like, fellas, do it again. Your nuke, your nuke wasn't good enough first time round. Go again with his A A3 here. Um, outside of the arena, he's in a lot of speed teams because he can reset abilities here. You know, He's perfect for a seer team to get her back to her main ability straight away. Um, is even perfect for a, a seer team or you know a poison exploder team because once you've got them to do that twice you, know, you get to a third wave saying doom tower and it's like damn now i actually need to control this team until seer gets her ability back again um well i'll tell you what he's going to do then he's going to send them to sleep for a turn give you a bit more time so yeah really really strong champion now my number two is going to be duchess here um, and I'm really struggling what number three is going to be, honestly. But Duchess, passive. A uh, passive is probably our strongest thing. Decrease the damage taken from AoE attacks by 25%. That's why we see her in so many arena defense teams. Not for the rest of the stuff, which is good, by the way. But because she reduces that Trunder hit from 150k per smack to a mere... What's that? 25% of that. 115k <laughs> whatever it is um i should go with easier numbers yeah but that a bit that passive on its by itself is actually really really strong straight up mitigating damage um she's also got an increased attack and block debuffs we spoke about block debuffs earlier it's a such a strong ability for most content in the game um whilst boosting your damage at the same time for your attack based champs and then she's got a full team revive you know one of the reasons why arbiter is so good full team revive she does it as well with a good amount of health. Um, and she puts heals on them at the same time. She's just solid. Really good base stat. She doesn't particularly hit hard. But uh, with the rest of her kit, she's about stopping you dying. Not about really punching out the damage herself. So Duchess is number two. Now number three, honestly, ah, where do I go with this? I really want to say Sakia because she's the fastest possible kind of answer to Spider. I really want to say Candy for... Uh, what a great nuker in the arena. Um, Countess Lix is great. But we're going to go Drex. The freebie. The, the one that everyone didn't want in the bazaar. What a mistake. Since Doom Tower came out, he is just in so many Doom Tower teams. Yeah, it's all about his passive. When he takes a hit, chance to throw out a burn. Burns are the best way to do damage to anything like Dungeons 21 to 25. Or any of the big Doom Tower bosses. Maybe not any, but most. Um, burns are the way to do it. And if you can get burns on multiple enemies, then damn, you're just laughing whilst the, the boss ticks for damage. 
So this is what he's all about. He's also got a nuke on his A2. Fast, good defense, uh, good base stats. Really amazing champion. So he's going to be my third one for Demon Spawn. Uh, let's go to the Undead. So top three then for Undead. Um, I mean, there's again, there's some crazy champions. If we were calling out Voids, you know, a couple of these are insane, by the way. But let's do my number one. I think it's got to be Rotus right now. Remember when Rotus was nerfed and he, he was never going to be played again? Number one sought after arena offensive champion right now for top players. Okay. Number one. He's insane. Um, he's still king of the nuke. He's actually awesome for stuff like Griffin as well, where you're taking a lot of damage. He just pumps his health up with this A2. He hits through unkillable buffs so anyone like your skull crowns your new leo you know leo the uh the big nuker um he doesn't care about that he's smacked right through his unkillable buff uh anyone who's got swift parry on he's like that see you later um yeah really good if if rush guards out there putting that block damage out there it's like nah that's not gonna work mate straight through it like butter slicing through um yeah so this this skill is super cool the shame about this skill, when they did the nerf of him, he used to block revive. The shame, yeah, it is the shame, but also he was broken back in the day. But the block revive is almost as if it's not there, but he does kill someone and get an extra turn. And the extra turn is really good because he hits kind of hard with his A2. He got a chance of an extra turn on his A1. And also this is on, if you book it, three turn cooldown, you actually get back to this really quickly. So there's a number of ways you can build him out. He also scales damage from both attack and HP. So if you wanted to build like a tank ro Rotus, you can and boost his HP. But don't forget, he's going to boost his own HP by doing his A2. So two turn cooldown on this. It's like pretty quickly you, you get yourself up to max HP from this anyway. Um, he is slow. That's his biggest weakness. But um, he's, he's very, very strong. Very strong. Um, who else have we got then? So I think I'm going to call out my shoulders the second one allows you to do things that you cannot do in the game with other champions okay there's only a couple of us that get into this kind of bracket it's seeker and it's deacon basically a turn meter manipulation or or speed manipulation where you also get an extra turn okay it's free turn cooldown he does this on a three turn cooldown but he gets an extra turn which in effect means it's a two turn cooldown so he actually keeps increased speed on your whole team forever yeah, it means you don't need someone extending buffs to make this work if you've got Michelle in the team. He allows for some crazy stuff in, in clan boss. He's also just kind of good anywhere. Um, now this ability here, throwing out true fear and leech on the whole enemy team. He's then got a nuke A3, single target, or basically a nuke A1 AoE. But it's coded like it's single target, which means that someone like Duchess, who's got that AoE passive, she doesn't, she doesn't protect you from this. It's all A1s coming at everybody. So it's actually really cool. Really hits hard. Good base stats. A little bit weak on defense, but otherwise super sweet. That's my number two. I think for my number three, again, you could call out a few here. Nephril, super, super solid. Um, I'm going to go with Bad L. Bad L, just so consistently great anywhere in the game. Very unique passive to boost your damage as, as soon as poisons are out there. Poisons and heals on his A2. And then a nice AoE heal on his A1. Good base stats. Still really relevant all through the game. He's also got a cleanse on his A2. Um, which makes him really relevant for a lot of Doomtail stuff as well. So top three undead. Let's move on to Dark Elves. Dark Elves, I'd say they've got some, uh, some pretty weak trash in... Maybe it's just Eva actually. Astralith kind of falls into that group a bit. Um, but top three for me... This has probably changed over, over the time that I've played the game, honestly. So I'm actually going to call out number one to be Ghostborn. Certainly with Doomtower, with the need to land your debuffs, um, you know, get, get yourself through the game. Uh, he's got good base stats as well, by the way. But he's got this A3 where you cannot resist his AoE drop defense. It can have a weak hit. So if he's up against um, magic affinity, then he's, he's in trouble. But outside of that, it enables you to guarantee a drop defense, yeah? Against Spider, you're guaranteeing that defense to go on. There's no 3% chance it's not going to happen. It's happening, right? At the same time, he's boosting your damage of your attack-based champions. So 
So this this ability alone is what gives him this right to be up there as a top champion. Um, he's got a drop defense here and he's got an AoE heal reduction here. If you build him with no resistance for this, then you can build him high damage or high speed or high whatever you want really. Um, but no resistance will mean none of this other stuff lands. So you kind of need to make your own judgment what how you want to build him. But um, this makes him extremely unique and extremely good in this game. Now number two for me, I think we're going to go with Ray. She's one of the top damage dealers in the game. She's got a great dungeon aura for speed. She's got an AoE um, remove all buffs from all enemies, which is super useful in tons of content. Arena, Doom Tower, Faction Wars, tons of places. Uh, and then there's a good chance to place a freeze on the back of it. But this is really what I love her for. So anyone puts a debuff out before her, make sure someone AoE drop defense first. She then nukes over the top and it's a slam dunk. Okay, it's a smack as long as there's a debuff out there. Uh, she's got an A1 which puts drop defense out there as well with a, an okay chance to land. Good, good champion, hard hitter. Um, and then my number three for this one, it could be Xavier. Xavier is super strong. Could be Vizier for being pretty damn unique in terms of his ability to extend buffs. I'm actually going to go with Foley. Foley's kind of like a next tier down neuter from someone like a Ray or a Robar or whatever. But he does kill people and they stay dead. Yeah, that's why he's so useful. You kill someone, they stay dead. Yeah, and keeping people dead is important in this game. So this block revive ability on his A3 is really good. He hits hard. Um, he's also got like multi-hitter on his A2, which is useful. Multi-hitter on his A1. So look at this, two four hitters. I did someone like Fire Knight. It's actually really useful. Bringing out two um, big hitters. You could actually turn his, his AoE off potentially if you wanted to. But um, the other thing which people don't really appreciate about him is his passive is annoying okay immediately removes stun freeze sleep and provoke these are like the best debuffs in the game to control someone he just shakes it off and then comes at them with whatever ability you want him to um so this makes him annoying because you have to think differently when you're facing him or you can use him to your advantage if you're using him to to attack but yeah fast hard hitter really really solid champion Okay, three to go then. Night Revs. Night Revs. So we talked about Calvalax already at the start of the video. I think he's up there as one of the top three. I think he's going to be potentially my number two. My number one, Tomb Lord, since his buff. Damn. This guy I already liked, okay? But since his buff, four turn cooldown now on this AoE drop defense and attack. Um, also, turn me to drop here. Multi Poison. This was a massive buff on his A2. He now throws out two poisons on everybody if he crits uh sorry if he doesn't crit four poisons if he crits and now it's for two turns it's a huge huge buff makes him viable for a lot more stuff clan boss poison exploder teams all that type of stuff he starts to become a really viable champion triple hit a1 with decreased speed on it as well means that he's really useful in a whole bunch of doom tower stuff bosses that type of thing good base stats tomb lord is great calvalax would come in as my number two here and then my number three, honestly, um, we've got a bit of trash in here. You know, Nama, my stoffer should be a lot better than he is. They are very difficult to use. My number three is actually Versolf. Um, really, really great addition to this faction. So he's got um, a chance to provoke A1 and a shield. It's okay. AoE uh, leech ability here. Places an extra hit if there's some sort of control going on. This is the hardest hitting HP based attack in the game yeah magna is easier to hit hard with but he doesn't hit as hard as this dude um it's a shame that there's this kind of requirement because it makes it quite difficult to use him or more difficult to use him a bit like with robar you have to have that kind of setup but if it's out there he hits freaking hard and can put leech out as well the leech makes him really viable for clan boss and this makes him a fantastic clan boss champion Increased defense on your team, three turn cooldown, um, and ally protection on your team, three turn cooldown. Ally protection is the most broken ability in the game for clan boss. Okay, means that you can keep your team alive way longer if you're not doing an unkillable team. Good base stats. Uh, he's got a passive with a chance to put provokes out. Really, really great champion. That's the night revs. Let's talk about the dwarves. Um, 
Not that many dwarves, but damn, probably one of the strongest factions for every champion having like a meaning uh, in the game. Samar didn't used to. Now he kind of does with Bommel, or he does with Bommel in the game. But my number one, this is going to offend anyone who loves Trunda. Brogni's the number one. He's got to be up there as a top five champion in the whole game. Uh, I, feel, I feel like I've said that at least six times in this video, but... <sighs> Brogni, Brogni, Brogni. What can't this guy do? What can he not do? Um, so, block debuffs. Yeah, increase attack and shield on an A3. It's a fantastic ability. The shield cannot be removed. It's a massive, massive part to this skill. Um, AoE and a chance to extend the shield that you've got based on your damage. Building for damage, guys. 100% crit rate, building for damage. The extension of the shield is great. He also just hits hard. Like, he's, he's a great champion. Uh, and then an HP burn on his A1. The passive is what makes him totally unique. Uh, it used to be similar to Geo, but now it's different from Geo. Basically, he's reflecting back damage whenever there's a shield out there. This can proc Giant Slayer debuff, um, or Giant Slayer hits, which means that it, it can just do a ton of damage with this. So... Geo, uh, Brogni can be used in a ton of Doom Tower content, Clan Boss. Even in the arena, he's actually really solid. So, Brogni, my number one. My number two, sorry, Trunda. Um, I apologize. You're freaking awesome. The easiest arena champion to use in the game. She's not the hardest hitting, but she's the hardest hitting one that doesn't require some sort of funky setup, okay? Which makes her easy. And she's also got two big aoe abilities yeah first one is this one if you put no accuracy in her kits then she won't place the stun she won't place the burn she'll just blow everybody up yeah easily she's like she's one of the few champions don't worry about decreased defense first she'll blow them up anyway yeah then the a2 uh it says single target but actually it attacks everybody else based on the damage you do and it's got some funky multipliers in it, which, which are broken, which means that you just explode people outside of the first hit. Basically, you want to go for someone who's a high HP, low defense, first target. You smack them into the next multiverse, and everyone else gets smacked along with them. It's, it's insane. Uh, an okay A1 as well. Uh, an okay passive, but she's really just about the nukes. And she's fast, and she's got good base stats. Um, now, my number three in this, I'm really torn. So Samar's got a one use in the game, which is Bommel, but Bommel's really hard. So you could call him out. Uh, Mooley is very unique in terms of her passive ability. When she takes a hit, she pushes your turn meter on, which makes her insanely good for arena. I think Herndig, I, I'm gutted I didn't fuse Herndig on my main. I don't know why I didn't do it. I was just kind of like, I've got plenty of decreased defense champions, but he is actually freaking amazing. Like such a good, good legendary champion. Um, AoE drop defense and accuracy on his A2 3 turn cooldown it's an absolute nuke okay um, full deplete turn meter on his A3 will then attack all enemies if the first attack was a crit so it's another AoE and it's a nuke and he's also got this reset ability on his A1 so attack someone grants an extra turn um, and decreases the cooldown of this if he kills someone well you know what he kills people that's what he does this hammer in their face, dead. Uh, and then you get back to using your other abilities really quick. So uh, he's also got this kind of passive fills turn meter every time they're hit. So he's got a chance to kind of throw himself forward in the turn order, get to his decreased defense, help the rest of your team do damage. Just a really, really great champion. Um, so last one up then is the Shadowkin. Now, um, yeah, I mean, from from today i think and maybe from tomorrow nobody will ever pull this champion again i mean i honestly wish they just they just kept this champion as the login reward champion i don't know if there's some sort of contractual thing with ninja that they can't they've moved it back to shaman now shaman is honestly absolute trash but like if i started the game today uh, versus a week ago i probably would be crying um Real tears, crying into my milk right now because this dude is the real deal. Really, really strong. Like in so much content, he is insanely good. Hard hitting A3 with a freeze. Fantastic. Like the A2, I can't even stress how good this A2 is. Okay. It does so much damage 
against any Doom Tower boss, against Clan boss, any boss, yeah? Because HP burn is based on enemy max HP. The further you get through the game, the more HP you're facing. So the HP burn gives you a consistent chunk, chunk, chunk of damage. He does it three times. And also he gets back to it quicker with this. So you kind of get back to that fantastic A2 really fast. Drop defense here as well. Uh, a passive which just boosts his damage on basically just for clan boss or if you're fighting for a long time in Doom Tower. But he's a hard hitting, brilliant, brilliant legendary champion. Um, my number two is Kimmy. Brilliant arena champion, brilliant Doom Tower champion. She's got this Doom Tower aura. I kind of wish this was all battles, honestly. But other than that, fantastic. She's got turn meter fill, speed boost, accuracy boost, A3 with block buffs. She's got an AoE hit, which is pretty hard hitting, actually. But you don't really build her for that. But two good debuffs on it as well. And turn meter drop as well. And then she's got turn meter control on her A1 as well. Um, just everything. About, she's kind of like an offensive version of Lissandra, really. Loads of turn meter control, loads of buffs. Uh, but she's also throwing out important debuffs for the enemy. Fastest champion in the game, kind of tied with a couple of others. Really, really amazing champ. Um, and then my number three here, honestly, is quite hard to call. They're all, I'd say, a similar level. Yeah, Yoshi brings something fairly unique. Can be used in Bommel. I like Genzin. It's like pretty fast, pretty nifty. Got an AoE drop defense, which is nice. Free turn cooldown. Loads of turn meter fill on his side. Um, bunch of turn meter fill going on with his A3 as well. And his A1. Uh, and his, his passive is kind of interesting as well of, of gaining speed. He's just fun. He's a fun champion to build out. But um, nowhere near the power of the other two for me. So there you go, guys. Um, good luck if you are pulling shards this weekend. Do not forget, though, that Halloween is around the corner. And you might want to be going for that fusion as well. Up to you. I've been Hell Hades. I will see you later.